And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Badlands. Uh, ravaging hunger, hunger Edition. Now, today I wanted to get started on a few things that, well, I'm putting on the long finger because there was more important projects to take care of. But the first one is just minimizing effort for our duplicates. Namely, so they don't have to do nearly as much work. Now, the first thing I've done, I've set it up here in the background. We're going to take an even more advantage of shipping rails just because they are so handy right now. Uh, shipping rails down here are bringing wood. This wood comes all the way down here and we send it over to our, uh, our ethanol distilleries. However, we what I'm doing here now is I have jacked on this loader. And what we're going to put on this one is poke shale malts of both varieties. That should, what that should mean is all of those get loaded up in there and start getting sent across the rail. Then what'll happen is, okay, well, we've got some wood coming down here, which is going to mess with this, but it's a good demonstration, I suppose. That will come all the way down here. Once it gets to this point, it's going to hit this splitter. Well, the solid filter. So the solid filter is set so all the wood goes straight on, which is exactly what we want. And everything that's not wood goes straight up here, along with this uh, conveyor rail, which is bringing over polluted, no, clay. Clay, sorry, that, that one's coming, bringing clay over, and I figured since it was going the same direction, we might as well hop onto it. That's the, the joy of these splitters now, is you can sort of have a main bus where everything goes along. Oh, and you know what? Here comes that puck, puck shell molt now. Uh, I wonder, does that cool down the area or not? You know what? I don't think it matters. What's that up to? 54 degrees. Never mind. That will uh, that area will get much cooler as that wood passes through. But once it hits there, it gets filtered and sent right up. Now this is where all our clay goes for making our ceramics. But at the same time, it's now going to hold poke shell mulch. And if we turn this on, poke shell mulch here, and we're doing that one there. Boom, what should happen is the moment the poke shell mulch show up, they'll get dumped into that. Or are they just going to stay in there? Yeah, oh my god, they're just going to stay in there. I really need to put down a container for this, don't I? You know what? Now that, now that we've got through the backlog, it's fine. We're going through the poke shells. We were able to smash up the poke shells faster than they're able to come in. Yeah, I'm going to not put in a storage container and hope that doesn't come back to bite me. But this was going to generate us an awful, awful, awful lot of lime. Now, there's a few questions about the poke shells that we dump in here. Will their shells absorb a bunch of heat? Yes, they will. However, if we check on poke shell molds down here, we've got 12 of them. Oh my god. They weigh about 10 kilos. And if we check our steel production here, steel requires 10 kilos of lime. So the 10 kilos of poke shell mold turns into 10 kilos of lime. We get to run one batch of steel, which generates so much heat. It's, well, what's the heat like over here? The, the petroleum there is coming out at 259 degrees. Yeah, it, it's really toasty. We're going to generate so much heat, it won't really make a difference. And, oh, yeah, I made a mistake there. And I made that out of iron ore. I was trying to clean up this polluted water that was uh, up here from an, a previous mistake. But anyway, let's uh, forget about that. That's just one section of using those uh, conveyor rails to cut down on transport for our dupes. They no longer have to pull all the poke shell molds from there and carry them all the way over. And there's there's just so many of them. Our steel is rocketing up no matter how quickly I spend all the stuff. Yes, I keep finding ways to spend more and more steel, even though I'm trying to save up for space. Anyway, next up, we've got our calories. Our calories are going up for the first time in a while. Our barbecue has is now rising up. Everyone's living on barbecue, but even with all of the hatches we had over here, like all of these hatch farms, we're not providing enough barbecue to keep them, well, to really raise our calories substantially. But the Slickster farms have now started, Slickster ranches have now started to kick in, and the amount of meat we're getting out of this is increasing our barbecue. However, all of the eggs get uh, evolved over here, so we need to move all the meat from here all the way over to our kitchen area automatically just to cut down on duplicate labor. Otherwise, every single Slickster that evolves in there, it's got to be carried over manually, which just takes so... It's just a bunch of effort we don't need to be wasting considering how low on duplicates we are. So, a very simple and straightforward system. This auto sweeper here picks it up, dumps it into this conveyor loader, and that will go all the way across here. Up here and across and get dumped off right beside our cooking area. Am I going to need to start making a second electric grill? I really hope I don't have to. I may need to, though, I think. Yeah, once you get up to a certain point, you're going to need a, a second one. But that person, Glenn there, their cuisine is up to... <laughs> their skill level is maxed out in cuisine. They are a super cook. Uh, another thing we can do is we also generate meat in here, so it might be an idea to start whisking the meat out of here with some auto sweepers also. Ooh, that's going to be a little bit trickier, though. There's a much larger area to cover in here. But I think we can do it. All we need to do is... Actually, all of the eggs in here get whisked out by these two, so we could just put in a, some sort of splitter on this and, you know, have the meat split off. Same thing over here, we could have some... Hmm. Actually, give me one second. This is starting to get more complicated as I plug more and more things in, but the simple system is this. This normally carries just eggs and dumps them over here. Now we've set it up to carry not just the eggs, but also any meat. So when any of these die, the meat they drop will automatically get dumped over here. 
also any eggshells that get dropped in here will also get dumped over here because I've been forgetting about the eggshells. Right, so we'll end up with all of the meat and eggs and eggshells all over here. And then once any meat, eggs or meat or eggshells show up in here, they'll all get dumped into this conveyor loader and sent down here. And this return line here is where the meat goes. So we'll filter these and all the meat will get sent over to our uh, cooking area to get barbecued. And everything that's not meat, which should be only eggshells, will just dump straight onto that line. That is the line that leads over here to our poke shell molds. So, we're going to make this eggshell slime as well. I know, that's, uh, yeah, that's confusing me and I built it. So, mm, yeah, there's just too many wires now. Everything is looking crazy. But that reminded me that, yes, I need to take care of the eggshells as well, because egg eggshells are smashable up for lime. So, we need to take the eggshells out of here as well. Eggshells loaded up there, that means that should automate everything coming out of this section. Right, uh, so eggshells and poke shell molds will all get dumped in there. I don't... Mm. Which means, if we're trying to make this as simple as possible, then we should have all of the poke shelf molds from over here that get sent over as well. Do we already have that? Ah, yes, we do. So all the poke shelf molds get shipped over, and all the eggs get shipped over here as well. This is going to make things far simpler. Now, over here, it's going to be a little bit trickier. I should maybe... Hmm, you know what? We should put in some supers here. We're going to end up with lots of eggshells down here. Might as well soup them all up. All right, even more stupidity. <laughs> This is, uh, any eggshells that end up in here, we'll sweep into these conveyor loaders and we'll dump them straight onto the lumber line. The lumber line is the same one that carries the, uh, the eggshells and the poke shell molds from over here, so all of those should automatically get dumped all the way across. Good. And they'll also end up going through our chill box for no apparent reason, but it's just the way the rails were going, so that's what we're going to follow. And then they'll go over here and get smashed up in the rock crusher. However, we're still not done. Uh, I've just realized that this can also pick up the eggshells from here, so maybe if we stick on a splitter there, what we could do is split it up so... Yeah, the eggshells go up there to get smashed, so we're going to need to put on a splitter here as well. All right. So with this added in, what happens is all the meat and eggshells get dumped in here, and the meat goes over to get barbecued, and the eggshells go up here to get smashed up into eggshells and lime. Now I haven't, uh, I've disabled the eggshells for the moment just so we could also enable these. What I want is when these slicksters die, they're going to drop meat. Um, so yeah, let's make sure all of that meat gets uh, sent across. Is it already set up? Oh, there we go. Already set up. It's like I was thinking about this in advance. All right, that's all of the slicksters dealt with. That's all of the, the Jurekos dealt with. That's all of the poke shells dealt with, all of their eggs and lime and everything. The only thing missing is the hatches. I need to also get all of their lime over and, you know, we should say hello to Chris. They go to the gym a lot and they will instantly be getting into our gym the moment they spawn. Oh, which reminds me, I should remember to immediately assign them at a skill point. Yeah, straight into that advanced research for the, the extra skill learning. Now over here, we have... Oh God, yeah, I kind of remember this. <laughs> I may need to make a few changes here to make this more comprehensible. You know, this isn't that bad. This isn't, this, this isn't that bad at all. All the uh, all the hatches here, all the eggshells, meat, uh, eggs, eggs, eggshells, and meat all get dumped across this rail. Goes straight down here and gets into this evolution chamber. Then what we'll have is any of the meat and eggs. They get sent across here, and they get sent up here where they get split off. The meat goes up to get cooked, and the eggshells go over here where they used to get smashed. We'll have to set that, though, to be sent all the way over here. Which is actually surprisingly simple to do. Uh, because we have all we have to do is plug it into the wood line. So it just goes straight across here. Uh, we hop it over and that should take it straight onto the lumber line. And the lumber line is of course filtered. And all of the eggshells, poke shell molts, all that stuff will all end up going up here to get smashed up. And we'll just make sure, yeah, I'll put the eggshells to line one back on there. And that should get rid of all of that. That was actually surprisingly easy. At the same time, if you'll notice over here, there's uh, this little section where th this is where our shovels and stuff like that, so any meat or eggshells from them will also get combined in. Uh, in fact, let's have a quick glance here as this one cooks off. We'll have, uh, we'll soon be able to see that meat in action. Alright, here we go. Meat goes straight up there, gets filtered out. Wait, that's not meat, that's eggshells. The meat was just behind it. Okay, so the meat goes up there. Oh, and I need to get rid of that. That's good to drop the eggshells down there. Oops, well, yeah, once that's gone, the eggshell should continue straight along there, go all the way along this rail, and get sent across our... I, I don't even know what to call this. Counterflow Lumber Exchanger? Counterflow Ethanol Lumber Exchanger? Uh, I haven't a clue. 
And then the rest of it will get dumped over here. And hopefully that should bring us in lots of steel. In fact, since we've started this episode, I think we've gone up about three tons of steel. Which I think is pretty good, considering most of the stuff here I've been making out of... Oh, that's made out of iron ore. That's bad. I should be making all of these out of steel, these uh, filters. Eh, you know what? Never mind. We'll leave, it, we'll leave it as it is for now. I think that all worked out and we've automated quite a substantial chunk of the base. I think uh, for the next step, though, I do need to get my hands in some more iron ore. Uh, the reason being, I'm running out of metal ores. Iron ore, I've got 54 tons of it left. I'd like to grab some more. And at the same time, get rid of these annoying overheat damages. They are driving me mental. It's always up there in the top left, just... Oh, insufficient oxygen generation? No, 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 no. Where do we put the oxygen generation unit? Uh, over here? Yeah. Has that stopped for some reason? No, no. We're golden. Uh, that's just the game playing silly buggers. In that case, uh, down here, I want to demolish this entire biome. This entire biome has to go. This should only take a quick minute. Done, done, and done some more. With all of that finished, that takes care of... Well, how much how much iron ore do we get out of that? Yeah, we got about 30 tons or so. That should... Well, that should tide us over for quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't mop up some of this water and get it out of here. It's been annoying me, just... It constantly keeps flashing to steam and bouncing a little bit, and it just looks nasty. If we can get rid of some of that, that would be great. If we can't, not going to cry over it. Uh, uh, Steel-wise, what are we looking like? 34 tons. We have 34 tons of steel. While all of that was going on, though, I did realize there was a couple of things I had missed. The first one was, the eggshells coming out of this are not automated yet. This, though, should only take two seconds. Done. All the eggshells that end up down here, straight onto that. And sent across the rail, they'll go up, get filtered, sorted out, and sent over. And you know what? Let's just have a quick trace of this one. I want to make sure there's no kinks or anything I didn't anticipate. Okay, that's fine. They all go along there. I'll go along here, then they should eventually get to here and come down and zigzag across. Yeah, we know it works from there on out. Then over here... Well, I forgot about this one too. We have so many incubators running. I also have to do this one as well. Uh, this one here, simple enough. All we do is, you know what? Uh, we can just stick that one on the same line as everything else that's going through here. What will happen is only eggshells that drop there will get dropped into this conveyor loader, which just so happens is conveniently built upon the clay line. The clay line that runs all the way over to here. So, yeah, it, it exact same thing. All we had to do was just place it there and we were done. Very quick, simple and efficient way of fixing that one. And uh, next up, oh, I do have to make the selections though. But that's sorted. All those eggs will end eggshells went up over there and finally... <laughs> The amount of labor you can save your dupes if you just put in just a little bit more time and effort. Uh, oh, damn it. There's an automation wire there. That could be an annoyance. I'll have to swing that up and around just to make sure it doesn't interfere with this. Oh, while well, that's happening, we've got some new candidates, and I think we're going to hire this meep over here who shall be renamed to The Doorman. Uh, they've got... Well, the reason I want them is they've got a plus to science and digging, so we'll we'll just turn them into another digger. They'll be perfect. But first off, they can go uh, they can go hop around inside the gym for a bit. Uh, where were they? Quick, simple fix. All of the eggshells get dumped across here. They get sent over here, where they get swept up by this one. It's. I think I think now finally we can say that every single piece of eggshell and poke shell molt all the way across this entire base that's any way involved with our production is swept up automatically. Now, there is a few things that are still manual. For example, uh, occasionally what's going to happen here is there'll be no space in the ranches for these uh, poke shells when they pop out. At which point, they will just happily run along in here until they turn into adults. The moment they become adults, this will auto-wrangle them. And once they're auto-wrangled, they'll end up uh, getting dropped off in here. This critter drop-off has a little bit of petroleum in it. It's rather warm in here. The evolutionary pressure on them will cause them to evolve quite quickly, at which point the poke shell molds can get shown into the rock crusher, because it's right beside there. It's just a nice quick way of getting rid of them. I think, I think we're going to be good from, for steel from here on out. Uh, if we just check the footage here, 12 cycles ago when we started this video, we had 26 tons of steel. We now have 36 tons of steel. I think our steel production is, is really about to kick into high gear. Oh, there's some iron ore. We could use that later. Uh, we'll just maybe collect those. There's always these little presents the game keeps leaving around, lying around for you. Okay, with all of that automation taken care of, with the new source of food we've got from here, we should be able to hire more dupes, and we can start going looking towards space. Though, if we're going to be doing space, I would like to improve our transport network. What is the temperature like up here? Ooh, yeah, I think we can start switching out all these ladders for plastic. 
Uh, I don't like to risk it too early on. I like to make sure that we've got a nice stable base because once you, if you know, if anything goes above 100, 140 or so, you end up frying all your ladders. I think we won't plastic ladder down here though. We'll just plastic ladder from about here up. Right, that will speed up the transport. Well, that will speed up the movement of our uh, dupes by quite a bit. At the same time, though, if we are, are going to crack into space, I would rather have a faster method of getting up there. I think what we're going to do is start breaking into transport networks. Oh, one second before we do that, I'm going to get rid of these bricks. Uh, they were here when I was trying to figure out how to make that sort of uh, abomination. Oh, cancel all of that. I just did an all delete. <laughs> That's one thing that annoys me. This keeps resetting to all the deconstruct. That I think there's a mod for it, though. Uh, yeah, that's... If I had to just let that go through, I would have deleted all the rails, the wiring, everything that was going through there. Um, yes, yes. That was it. We want to get a transport network in. And I think we just need a small one to start. We don't have really... Considering the amount of incubators we're running, I'm surprised our power grid hasn't fallen over. I really am. We are running... Uh, what is it? We've got 4, 8, 12. We've got 16 incubators over there. We've got another 3 incubators down here. Uh, so, yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... 21, 22, 23. We're running 23 incubators. On the bright side, all our ranchers are going to get lots of experience hugging eggs. I mean, it's not like the animation takes very long, but, you know, when it's 20 plus incubators, it's got to help out, right? Now that most of the plastic ladder is complete, let's get our transport grid going. Transit tube access will speed things along quite a bit. You know what? Let's take a second one right there. Yes, I know there's no tiles under that, but that could be fixed, and we'll just delete these ones above it. We can probably stack a third one on top of that as well if we want, though I think we'll just start with two and see how it goes. Yeah, I, I may have made the roof, roof just a little bit too close to that one, so a few minor modifications. I also switched them to making them out of gold just in case they tried to overheat. And we now have a at the starts of our transport grid. This is just going to go straight up here. And once we get rid of that ethanol there and it's no longer... You know what? We can do a little bit of minor modifications here to push that ethanol out of the way and continue this up straight, straight away now. All right, that will get our entire crew topside. Well, so long as they're on shifts, they'll uh, get up. Oh, that should remind me actually scheduling. All my new people have going straight into schedule one. I should really move them around. Yeah, I've had two people per shift, so I'm going to start having to put three people per shift, I think. Oh, I'll sort that out in a minute off screen. But uh, for the time being, that is our little tiny transport network. We're not using, we're not even going down to the bottom of the map with that. We're just using it to go up because going down is easy with... Um, fire poles it's only going up that's slower even with the plastic ladder so this should allow our people to get up to space faster so when we do start getting in, tucking into space in the next five minutes or so we should be able to get up there without too much problems but why is that taking so long insufficient power why is that saying insufficient power you plugged into the main grid main grid has sufficient power what is going on with you deleted it rebuilt it all good again perfect and during that entire thing, we've gone up to 40 tons of steel. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we have, how much iron do we have? We have 387 tons of iron. So if I want 500 tons of steel, I'm going to have to start mining out some more of those, uh, those iron veins that are around the place. But I think first up, we're going to start demolishing the entire space biome. I want everything left to right gone, so we know how far, how much, how much space in space we have to work with. At the same time, we can demolish all of this from the outside because it'll be in the vacuum of space. That would be so nice. Ah, the wonderful joys of working in a vacuum. The volcano is... The super hot minerals around here are of absolutely no threat to us. They can wander across all of the super hot material without any problems. Does it matter to me? Well, okay, does it matter to physics? Who cares? As so long as it works for us. Uh, I should set up my sweeping as well. What we want to do is sweep all of this hot rocks into our industrial sauna. I mean, we don't really need... Well, do we need the power? No, batteries are still good, so we may not need the power, but at least it's something we should do. Oh, and uh, one last piece of automation I put in on the side to save us with power was these gas pumps and these uh, carbon skimmers. The carbon skimmers come on when we lose too much carbon dioxide in here. However, if the carbon skimmers can't keep up, what happens is this uh, countdown timer starts. So this uh, countdown timer will start to count for about 100 seconds. And if the carbon skimmers have not managed to take care of all the carbon dioxide that's causing the problem, those gas pumps will kick in and start pumping the gas out of there. They should be needed less and less, though, as more and more slicksters become available. The slicksters combined with the uh, the carbon skimmer should take care of everything. Right now, we're looking at how many slicksters we got. We're still one short there, seven short there, uh, full, full, uh, oh, full, and eight short there. But once all of those are full, yeah, we shouldn't have to work. We shouldn't have to need those gas pumps anymore. Uh, damn it! I meant to do something else tonight. Yeah, I need to change the priority down there. Excavated, swept. Now it's time to just make a magma tank here. I don't know if I'm going to activate that volcano just yet. I, I realized I was leaving that around to make a, a regolith melter. But 
then I realised I put this giant tank of water in the way. I'm, I'll have to revisit that at a later date. For now, the plan is, well, we're going to go up into space and we're going to wall it off. Uh, here, I think we're going to put our ladder system, say, right here. Yeah, why not? Uh, though we might want to make it out of something that's more common up here, like, say, mafic rock, just to make it easier to replace. And we'll just go straight up to the top of the map, and we'll see what's up there. I do have the Falling Sands mod installed, so the moment we break that open and all that regolith falls, we should instantly start digging it out. As well as that, we got a little bit of space here we can dump it into. All right, but uh, let's see how high up into space we can go, and I think I'm going to not uh, not wall up as tight against the top of the map as before. We want to capture some more regolith than normal. Since we're trying to capture more regolith than normal, I'm not going to wall up tight against the edge of the map. Normally you'd wall up right up, right up here so that nothing else could fall in. Instead, what we're going to do is give ourselves one, two, three, four. We're going to give ourselves four tiles of empty space here, and then there's two tiles above that, meaning we'll have six tiles where regolith can start to accumulate. Now, I am going to put bunker doors all across the top like that. Oh, you know what? Let's have a quick check on a steel count before we start, and uh, another thing. To figure out exactly where to place these, I sort of just ran bunker tile, bunker doors all the way from the edge of the map, so I knew exactly where to place my bunker doors so that everything would line up perfectly. So we just cancel that there now, and oh, we can cancel that one too. They were just uh, for spacing them out. We have 47 tons of steel. That, that seems like a decent amount of steel. Now, let's just wall off the top of the map and get space finally sorted out. It took us long enough to get here, but now that we've got all this steel pouring in, we should be able to smash through it in no time. When you're doing this, do yourself a bit of a favour. There's just the huge travel distance required. I like to put a, a storage bin of mafic rock, and I'm going to put a storage bin of steel up here. I set them to really high priority until they're full, and then once they're full, I put them back down to normal. There's no point keeping this on nine the whole time, but at least nine until it's stocked up. And that way, my dupes only have to run a short distance to get their ladder segments and all that. It just speed things up so much. Otherwise, you'll be here for, well, you'll be here for a long time waiting for this to complete otherwise. Well, we've got a few meteor strikes to be inbound, but uh, they did bugger all to this. Bunker doors do their job exactly as intended. Uh, quick note, make sure that you set your bunker doors when you're building them to priority 6 and the ladders to priority 5. That way your dupes should build up dump bunker doors before they build the ladders. That just sort of keeps them safe and out of the way of meteor harm. Also stops you having to repair all the ladders all the time. Uh, just one of those nice little time-saving things. Now, at the same time as that's been going on, we've got more fish. Some Paku have shown up, so, well, let's add them to our care packages. So we'll throw those out, and they'll get picked up by the plastic fish traps. And then we're going to dump them into our pool of ethanol. Uh, one of the th weird things about Paku is they don't care what liquid you put them in, so long as the liquid just is inside their livable temperature range, they'll quite happily swim around in it. So, it doesn't matter if it's clean water or ethanol or salt water or anything like that, even petroleum, crude oil, if you cool it down to the right temperatures, Paku just don't care. So we're going to dump them all in there and they'll have uh, pre-saturated, wait, no, marinate. That's it. We're going to marinate them in alcohol so that they're they're ethanol, so that they're much tastier when they eventually turn into meat. Um, there should be plenty of room in that ethanol tank for them. Yeah, we'll even be adding in more. There you go. You going to drop? They do like to ignore gravity. <laughs> come on, come on, you can do it. No, no, you're just going to fly. Yeah, sometimes the physics in this game are a bit weird. Ah, there we go. Gravity finally looked around and went, wait, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be doing that. Well, they seem quite happy. Yeah, they're wild happy and they're hungry and they're hanging around in a pool of ethanol. They should be perfectly fine. So that's five traps we've got up there. So six, seven, eight. That should take care of the rest of them. Hey, let's get back up to space and get this finished. We're almost there. Just a little bit more on each side and we'll be done with this one. All done. We have space sealed off as such. We can now do whatever we want with the space. <laughs> with the space in space, we can do what we'd like. I think it's time to get some glass going on. We're probably going to throw down uh, at least some solar. Oh, and I want to do that uh, that trick I saw in one of the base living videos where someone put six, uh, what was it, six space scanners all on, under one underneath the other just to scan space to get that perfect coverage. I mean, we won't quite start out that way, but I'm thinking right about here is a good place to put it in. We've got plenty of, a uh, big, huge gap between... Uh, this side here and the bottom of, well, where we're going to be putting placing it in. But before we do that, we're going to need some glass. So it's time to throw glass into this somewhere. I'm just not quite sure where we want to put glass in this. I don't think we want to put it in anywhere near the steam. That would cause it to break in the pipes. Down here in the carbon dioxide might be the best place to put one. All right, the glass forge is complete. I just stuck it down here and we're going to output the liquid from it right over to here and drop it down. So hopefully that 
You know what? I should turn that brick into something that's not so porous. Otherwise, it might just pour down another couple of levels. All right. So in theory, the molten glass will fall down there, hit that plate, which is made of iron. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about that overheating um, or melting. And then the glass should form there, assuming that it doesn't solidify instantly inside the glass forge. But for the time being, I'm going to take a... I'm going to let a few projects catch up. The reason being... Well, we've been flat out doing construction projects for a while and a lot of stuff has been getting put on the long finger. A lot of things need to be cleaned up, tidied up, some sweeping needs to be done. Uh, just general stuff so that all the, the dupes can catch up with everything that's going on around the place. There's uh, some stocking up that hasn't been done. Like this this bin for the sand has not been topped up and it's literally run out of sand. So this is getting manually filled up, which is very inefficient. At the same time, I was thinking, well, if I'm doing that, I might as well put a sand bin over here as well because, you know, that would be useful. Uh, we can stick one there and throw in an auto sweeper on top of it. Oh, I might make it out of steel. Yeah, we'll put it right about there, and that should uh, help cut down on the problems that side as well. Well, not so much problems, just I'd prefer to have this full of sand. It would cut down on manual labor, is what I'm trying to say, I suppose. With all of that done, I just want to let those all catch up. Once they've all caught up and everything's been topped up again... Wow, that's that's going to be a long while before that gets filled up. Item 51? Ugh, ugh, ugh. I'll skip this forward while we catch up with all of this. Well, another dupe did come along while I was waiting, so why not? They've got construction and machinery. That That's a mechatronics engineer right there. That'll be Camilla. I'm running out of good place names to give them. Uh, that, uh, that's another one. And how are we looking on these this front again? Seriously? You done yet? Caught up? Nope. Nope. Still in the 40s. Steel-wise, we're at 21.8 tons. If we get ourselves another four tons, we'll be right back where we started at the start of this episode, despite having sealed off space. I love puck shells. Finally, finally, the dupes are managing to catch up with all the tasks. Uh, once they've stocked up this sand, the filtration medium there, and then we're going to get them to put in some sand in there, we can we can finally get around to doing some uh, glass, which means we can do solar. Though I'm not sure exactly where to go from here. Well, we're definitely going to do space. I want to get a, a steam rocket up and running and at least, you know, start researching the close by planets. Oh, we're also going to need to get an oxygen supply up here. There's several things we've got to do, right? All right, I think we're just about out of time for today. The next step up, I think, install a telescope, get the steam rocket up and running, start smashing through the planets, get the research on the, out of the way. I want to get um, as much space materials as I can. It would definitely make things easier if we could start simplifying these liquid locks by getting in some visco gel. At the same time, let's just have a quick look at glass production. And when it comes to glass, oh, these things can be a pain in the butt to work with. If you have glass breaking instantly the moment it comes out of the pipe, as in the very first pipe segment here is shattering, What's happening is it's not because you've got bad pipes. What's more than likely happening is the glass is cooling down inside the machine. So you'll see the glass in here is 1740. And then it actually is dropping in temperature even as it's slowly emptying out of the pipes. So it doesn't, that first blob is gone out, that first 10 kilos. But the other kilos take a few seconds to leave. So what happens is if the ceramic glass forge is say resting on some liquids or anything with good conductivity or even in gas that's very cold, it will suck enough heat out of the glass that by the time the glass leaves the pipe, it will have already hit its uh, freeze point of 1126, which means it will shatter the pipes immediately. So just remember if you're working with uh, glass and it's shattering the pipe right here, the problem is not with the glass forge, or the problem is not with the pipe itself that you're outputting, it's the problem is with the glass forge and where you've situated it. Make sure it's in a not sitting on top of any liquids, make sure it's thermal conductivity, whatever it's sitting on top of has terrible thermal con conductivity. Put down some insulated tiles or it, something like that. It's just one of those things that keeps coming up again and again and again that people get caught by. Yeah, but, oh man, do you remember when, well, I remember when I put this together first and I'm like, wow, my, my industrial brick, I made it way too big and then it turned out to be too small and now it's just jammed everywhere full of junk. It worked out quite nicely. Another thing I realized was the ethanol distillery produces exactly enough carbon dioxide to feed five tame slicksters. So each one of those is worth five tame slicksters. That's why they produce the amount they do. They're, they're balanced. So two of them will feed 10. Four of them, which runs one petroleum generator, will support 20 slicksters. And these eight will produce support 40. Hmm. It's just uh, weird the way that worked out, eh? Well, that would mean they would, all eight of these would support exactly five ranches of tame slicksters. Hmm. They knew what they were doing when they did those. Uh, uh, well, all of that is done, though. We still have one major problem, and uh, that major problem is I don't have enough ranchers. I have way, way, way too many critters. So many of these are glum because they're not getting groomed. It's not that people can't get in here. People can get in here. It's just there's there's no time. If we check the errands here, let's try, see errands. Yeah, it's number 18 on Brent's list. Okay, Brent, what, what's what's on your list for today? Let's see. Ranch shearing station. Ranch grooming station. Ranch shearing station. Ranch grooming station. Oh, and there's 18 more grooming stations that need their attention. That's... 
that's just insane. There's so much ranching going on because of all of the shearings, the groomings, everything. I just, I mean, we're, we have we have lots and lots of ranchers. We have seven, I want to say. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven ranchers, all who started with 11 in animal husbandry. Well, seven in animal husbandry plus four from the ranching itself. So they would have been at 11. And because they've been doing so much egg hugging, like Michael here has gained five points in uh, in husbandry. Tahini's gained, Tahini, ah, Tahani's gained four. Tahini, Tahani. Um, yeah, 14. So all of them have actually gained a point or two. Even Simone, who's one of the newest ones, has gained an extra point in animal husbandry just from hugging all the eggs. We still don't have enough ranchers. I'm going to need about another two ranchers just to take care of the critters we've currently got running before we could expand any further. And at the same time, steel production is absolutely amazing. Look at that. It's 32 tons of steel. We were down to 20 at one point. And we've produced 12 tons. There's just so much steel. It's... Oh, we're going to... Yeah, I, I don't even know. Yeah, we're going to do... That's it, the regolith melter. That's why we needed so much steel. Also, I just wanted that much steel. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop rambling and I'll cut this out here for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.